Gracious and loving God, may only your words be spoken. May only your words be heard. Amen. Why is freedom so very scary? Why is it all we cry out for and yet hesitate to embrace? How can it be a central value of a country that at the same time seems so determined to prevent it from happening? On this Memorial Day weekend, how can we imagine honoring those whose lives were taken while carrying out their pursuit of freedom as they understood it, when we won't allow the freedom they fought to protect to rule? Though the particulars change from generation to generation, and though the weapons of fear get more sophisticated in carrying out their task. The truth remains that humanity has always had a love-hate relationship with freedom. Not the concept, not the political idea of it, but the real, empty tomb, abundant life, Jesus Christ freedom, he gave up his life that we might know. It's there in Hebrew scripture, of course, right? As the Israelites follow Moses out of slavery into Egypt and into the wilderness. They are free now. And that freedom has placed them in a wilderness that scares them. It doesn't take them long before they are longing for the familiar captivity of Egypt. And it's there in the reading from Acts we heard this morning. There in the story of Acts, the birth of the church, is a story about imprisonment and the reluctance to embrace true freedom. The girl is a slave. And she struggles with what we would most likely diagnose as a mental health challenge. But she is healed. The young girl is free, both in body and in spirit. And her owners lash out. They cannot rejoice in her healing. They do not celebrate her freedom. They want the liberators punished. So Paul and Silas end up in jail, literal imprisonment. In prison, their faith in God causes the very earth to shake, shackles to fall to the ground, and the doors of their cells to crack open. Yet, when the guard wakes, before he can carry out his own corporal punishment for their freedom. He hears Paul's voice letting him know they are still there. Shackles on the ground, jail cell doors wide open, yet they did not claim the freedom they had been given. They remain willing captives until they walk out together with their captor. We know this paradox in our own lives, don't we? When we ourselves have been offered freedom, but have been too afraid to embrace it. Or perhaps we have heard the cry of another who wishes to be free, but we have been too afraid to offer it. Real freedom, it's scary when there is no one to guide you in your being free. Prison recidivism isn't about bad people just doing bad things over and over again. 
It's about a people who have been broken, getting tossed into the wilderness of freedom without a Moses there to guide them. All too soon, their Egypt starts looking better and better, or at least more and more inevitable. Substance abuse is not about a longing or a desire to remain in the prison of one's addiction. It is about not knowing how to leave the cell, even if the shackles have been broken and the door has been unlocked. Our culture wars are really wars about freedom. They are about allowing others to claim the freedom God is offering them, but of which we have made ourselves the arbitrators. When we talk about sin, we too often reduce it to a list of behaviors. And surprise, we have made ourselves the judge and jury of what belongs on that list. But sin is really about a state of relationship with God. It means missing the mark. When we are in sin, we are in impaired relationship with God, and God calls us to repair that relationship. We have done the same thing we did with sin, with freedom. We have reduced the abundant freedom God has given us into a list of rights we label freedoms and about which we argue and disagree fiercely. We spend more time talking about what behaviors are and aren't a sin than we do actually seeking restoration of relationship with God, which is the main mission of the church. It's right there in the Book of Common Prayer, page 855. Look it up. Quote, the mission of the church is to restore all people to unity with God and each other in Christ. We spend more time arguing about what is and isn't a right than we do actually pursuing the freedom that is ours for the taking and that God longs for us. The events of these past two weeks in Buffalo and in Uvalde tell us everything we need to know about whether or not we are a people seeking freedom for God's people everywhere, or a people who refuse to let go of a power the world gives them, even at the expense of the freedom of God that God gives everyone. Friends, what is more free than a ten-year-old? What is more free than stopping at the market to pick up groceries for that tonight's dinner with family? What's more free than dancing with abandon in a nightclub in Orlando, or going to a concert in Las Vegas, or attending a Bible study at a church in Charleston, South Carolina? What is more free than loving who God made you to love? or to be fully who God made you to be. We are a country enslaved and imprisoned to a belief that our individual freedoms are inextricably dependent on another's imprisonment. We will see more laws passed to limit the rights of those who seek freedom until we embrace the truth that not one of us is truly free until each and every one of us is truly free.
My freedom in Christ is dependent entirely on yours. We will see more scenes like the ones in Uvalde and in Buffalo until we as a people escape the slavery of individual so-called rights having higher value than the freedom of all of God's children. We will do this dance we are doing over and over again. We will leave Egypt until the wilderness gets too uncomfortable and the promised land remains out of sight to us. Soon Egypt will begin to beckon us back with the siren calls of, what can I do about it anyway? Or, I don't want to discuss politics. Or, you're preaching to the choir. We will do this again and again. Our righteous anger and that of a few politicians will shake the earth. And for a moment, we will feel the doors of our cells crack, cells crack open and our shackles loosen and fall. We might even get a brief glimpse of what the promised land looks like, what life lived in freedom might actually look like. But we will stay in our cells waiting for the jailer to escort us out before we step into the daylight. And while we wait for that to happen, the shackles will tighten and the doors to ourselves will slowly swing shut until we are surprised, though we shouldn't be, by the sound of them locking while we are still inside. In his farewell discourse, this part of John's Gospel we heard this morning, Jesus is trying to let his followers know what he hopes will sustain them when he is no longer with them. This prayer, Jesus says, these are the final words he has to offer. The words Jesus hopes will linger in the air after he is gone. That they all may be one, he prays. That they may be one as we are one, he prays again. That they might be completely one, he prays a third time. So that love with which you have loved me may be in them. Jesus dreamed for the world he was about to leave. His hope for the sacrifice of his life was that we would be as united with one another as God is with God's very self. That we would know God's love for us as much, as lo as much love for us as God had for God's Son. And that we might share that kind of love with one another. Imagine it. Imagine with me just for a second loving one another as much as God loved Jesus. As much as Jesus loved God. As much as Jesus loves us. Imagine loving God enough to celebrate the freedom of another, whether or not we understand, approve of, or desire that freedom for ourselves. Imagine loving God enough to put down your weapons, and we all have them, whatever they may be, in order that beloved children of God might live the lives God gave them in real freedom. We are in a wilderness time right now. The promised land seems out of sight and out of reach, and we don't really know where we're going or where we are headed. So we have an opportunity right now, in this time, to keep going in the wilderness, loving one another through it all until we get to the freedom God desperately wants for us to claim. 
hiding behind individual privileges and calling them rights, that's easy. Real freedom, freedom that is dependent on the freedom of everyone around us, is much, much harder. So I ask you, I beg you, ignore the voices that will call you back to Egypt. Celebrate the freedom of the one that had been enslaved and is now free. Run as fast as you can out of the cell you are in before your shackles claim you once again. And for God's sake, put down your weapons and let us love one another into the true freedom God intends for us.